IBM Security presents How to Get Fished and Survive, the IBM Security Immune System. Data is the fuel of the new digital economy. Customer acquisition and retention are critical for success. With new delivery channels like cloud and mobile, new information sources such as wearables and devices, coupled with a giant information wave from cognitive and analytics, information is now more pervasive, porous, and shared, making it more difficult to secure. What does all this mean for organizations? It means taking a new approach to security. Think of security as an immune system. Security controls and practices should be designed according to an integrated, multi-layered approach. Effective cybersecurity needs to be set up like an immune system, a system of capabilities that work together to protect the entire organism, regardless of the threat source. A human immune system relies on layers of protection to create a barrier to disease, detect invaders when they get through, and ultimately respond to eliminate the threat. A security immune system works the same way. It brings together capabilities to prevent, detect, and respond to advanced threats in a continuous and coordinated fashion. Among these capabilities are network and endpoint protection, data protection, identity and access, mobile, cloud, and incident response. At the center is integrated intelligence to correlate and analyze siloed information from hundreds of sources and to automatically detect and respond to threats. A multi-layered approach means you can identify threats no matter where they occur whether way out at the edge of the network or deep inside your infrastructure. Attackers spend an estimated 243 days on a victim's network before being discovered. Let's see how we can detect and protect against external threats using a security immune system. In our demonstration, we'll watch how Pretty Good Health, a fictitious healthcare provider and insurer, is struck by a spear phishing attack that begins with malware used to steal an employee's credentials. It stars Charlie, the cute little puppy. It also stars Janet Stevens, an unsuspecting patient intake coordinator. Janet is studying to be a database administrator, so she has elevated access credentials. Let's get started. Our story begins with a Facebook friend named Bad Guy. He's emailed Charlie's photo to Janet. And that photo is linked with embedded malware to steal Janet's credentials. Janet's on a break right now and she really wants a puppy. She can't resist clicking on Charlie's photo. And you'll see that on the left. Bad Guy uses the embedded malware to connect to Janet's workstation. And he's preparing to capture every keystroke. Watch him at work on the right. Meanwhile, Janet gets an innocent Facebook login screen and she doesn't realize she's been fished. Watch Bad Guy's machine on the right. He has a direct connection to Janet's computer. Well, break time is over, and Janet gets back to work admitting a sick patient into the emergency room. She's logging into the patient intake application, and now Bad Guy is capturing her user ID and password and everything else. Notice how her username and password show up in the attacker's remote access tool on the bottom right. She's typing in a social security number, looking up the patient's info, and all along, Bad Guy watches this information flowing across and notices she's accessing personal health and financial information. Bad Guy is capturing everything. The patient intake application is full of personal information, and now Bad Guy has a target. He notes the patient name, I'm a sick man, address, credit card, and other sensitive information. And at this point, he could use additional hacking tools to expand the attack, such as using SQL injection to attack a vulnerable web server and attack the database or even plant a ransomware attack. SQL injection is one of the most prevalent hacking methods besides phishing today. In our example, Bad Guy has even taken over Janet's computer and now he's using SQL injection in a vulnerable web form to steal Andy's password. He could use this information to expand the attack. Look at the event description field, and you'll see there's password displayed. Bad Guy continues with his work. 
He's got passwords from the keylogger and server names from browsing Janet's desktop files. Because he's not been detected and he's traversed the network, Bad Guy can also work directly on the database and file server. Watch him connect to the server and steal the data. He's going to log in as Janet and run a script called Hack to steal both databases and files, including Word and PDF docs. Normally this is done over several weeks and months, with him repeatedly searching for the information. We are compressing this for demonstration purposes. He's just run the hack script and there's the stolen data, ready for transfer. It contains a wealth of information. Now we've got a breach on our hands. How could we have detected and prevented this attack? First, we can make it more difficult for the attacker to get in and to expand his attack. According to a recent Ponymon Institute report, 36% of the time hackers will give up once they have to spend more than 20 hours of effort, and at 40 hours, it's 60%. So let's rewind our story and learn how a security immune system could have helped. First, we need to block the malware. When Janet clicks on the puppy photo again, the network security layer detects and blocks it from launching. Our security intelligence engine is flagging the malware attack and Janet's IP address. Instead of a Facebook login, Janet gets a Java plugin error message. Next, remember our SQL injection attack? This is where network security comes in again, by detecting and blocking the SQL injection attack. When bad guy types that SQL to get Andy's user information, nothing is returned into the event description field. The blocked events are then sent to the security intelligence engine for alerting and correlation. Not only do we see the block malware messages, we also note the SQL injection attack message. We can even quarantine this connection and prevent further attempts. Now suppose the company wasn't using malware detection and bad guy was somehow able to get into the database and file server. How could we detect unusual activity and prevent him from stealing data? That's where data protection and data activity monitoring come in. Using the data security layer, we can monitor activity to block sensitive data and file access for Janet. So when bad guy tries to steal that data again, the data activity monitoring blocks bad guy. He gets error messages instead of data, since that monitoring policy no longer allows the user Janet to directly access this personal information. Bad guy's attempts to access both databases and files are now blocked. Another way we can strengthen the immune system response is by controlling privileged user access with privilege identity management. Users such as Janet, who have elevated access, need to be monitored more closely. Between 55 and 80% of breaches are from these insider threat attacks, either through compromised credentials or via employee theft. A recent Market Pulse survey revealed that one of every five employees said they would sell their corporate credentials, and 43% of them would do so for less than $1,000. So how does privilege identity management work? With PIM, we can provision a shared credential so that it is checked out and back in, and all activity down to the keystroke is logged. Janet is going to check out her new Janet DBA credential using a Privilege Identity Manager. In our example, she uses the Oracle Toad tool for database administrator activities. Suppose she does need to look at patient and billing information. Perhaps she's chasing down a performance problem. When Janet logs into the database, the Identity Manager prompts her to check out the Janet DBA credential. The password is provided for her. She never has direct access for an attacker to steal it. She's checking out the credential now and is prompted to enter a justification. A session recorder tracks all her activity. Let's try to access some sensitive data like we did before. First, she's limited on how long she can use the credential. In this case, it's set to an hour. You'll also notice a pop-up screen indicating activity recording. When Janet accesses the data, both the social security number and credit card numbers are masked out another activity monitoring capability. She can only view the non-sensitive data. Returning to the Security Intelligence Console, 
the Privilege Identity Manager checkout message plus two additional activity monitoring messages have flowed in. The PCI rule violation was triggered by Janet's viewing the credit card table. Now the data protection and the privileged identity layers coordinate information to provide a detailed picture of Janet's activity. We know when she checked out and used the Janet DBA credential, and we know what she did. It's shown in this correlation report in the Data Protection Console. Having this level of visibility into credential use could save us a huge amount of investigation time. We also need to test our databases and applications for vulnerabilities such as SQL injection. We've combined application and database vulnerability test results into a single console. We can drill on our test results and get mitigation advice. For example, a test for failed login attempts. We also know we had a SQL injection vulnerability in our application. Let's search for it and see what the application security scan found. The scan found our SQL injection attack and even advises us how to fix it, including a code snippet and detail showing the field where the vulnerability was found, the ICD code. Returning to our scenario, the Security Intelligence Engine has been busy logging and correlating privileged user checkout and data protection alerts in the background. Notice the HIPAA rule violation, PCI rule violation, and even the SQL injection event. Putting it all together, Security Intelligence acts as a brain. It correlates events, infuses analytics and cognitive to identify real threats. So how do we know what could be a real threat? Let's take a closer look at offenses, correlated threat activity. We can use the Incident Overview app to graphically explore the incidents. Each bubble size corresponds to its magnitude and risk. We can drill down to get a better understanding of each offense and the related events within. For example, a linked incident was flagged by a successful login from Janet's IP address because her computer may have been compromised. Remember, we blocked that pesky puppy on Janet's workstation. Security intelligence helps us make that linkage we might otherwise have missed. The last part of the immune system is incident response. What if we do have an incident on our hands like this one? We can flag one of the offenses and directly open an incident right from the Security Intelligence Dashboard. Incidents do happen, regardless of how strong your security is. Being able to coordinate response and open an incident directly from the Security Intelligence layer means all the information collected can be shared to enable quick response. In the event of a breach, you can even automate the process of notification, such as HIPAA, and get the right people involved quickly. In our example, we flagged the SQL injection attack as a possible HIPAA violation. From here, we can use the built-in workflow to assign the incident to compliance and possibly legal for additional investigation. Automating our incident response will really help improve resource coordination and reduce response times. For example, we can identify what personal information was affected and quickly obtain guidance on formal breach reporting regulations. Finally, using closed-loop security, the blocked puppy malware event from the network security layer dynamically updated a data protection policy that placed extra monitoring on Janet's workstation. When Janet accessed the patient table as Janet DBA, that policy triggered a suspicious user's data security alert. All of this is visible and correlated by security intelligence. And this is what we mean by continuous and coordinated security, a dynamic closed loop. Not only did we see how security intelligence acted as a brain to correlate events using analytics to identify real threats, we also saw how events flowed in from the network security layer with malware and SQL injection detection, how file and database activity monitoring blocked inappropriate activity, and privileged user monitoring helped us to manage shared credentials. We tested for and mitigated potential vulnerabilities that an attacker could exploit, 
And when we did experience an incident, we were able to understand how the events were related and then to open a formal incident to better communicate and coordinate our swift response. Again, each of these domains works together to provide a security immune system designed to efficiently identify, detect, prevent, and respond to potentially devastating attacks. Data is the fuel of the new digital economy. Protect it with a security immune system. For more information, go to ibm.com security. Thank you.